Welcome to Brantley County High School Registration 2020. We're sorry that we weren't able to meet with you face to face to discuss this process and advise your students, but we have a plan in place to get our students advised, assisted, and registered for next year's classes at BCHS. It starts with some information we need each of you to see and hear. So this is our agenda. We're going to briefly discuss each of these topics, graduation requirements, plan of study, course options, advanced placement and dual enrollment courses, pathway options, hope requirements, and plans for registration. So graduation requirements for Brantley County High School. All students have to have at least 27 units to graduate. They have opportunity for 32 in their entire high school career, so very little wiggle room. And 16 of these credits must be core credits for each from each of the four core subject areas. In addition, they'll have to, all students have to also um, get 11 elective credits. Okay, so most of you remember back um, as a freshman, you had to select a plan of study. So you either selected career tech prep, college prep, or research university prep. So we know that sometimes plans change. We know that sometimes um, maybe you have some opportunities that you didn't anticipate, or um, just maybe your, your interests have changed and you need to change your plan of study. Um, for that reason, we're asking even our, our 10th, 11th, and 12th graders um, rising 10th, 11th, and 12th graders to once again select their plan of study um, just so that we have the most up-to-date information about you prior to registration. I'm sorry. So now we're going to talk for a few moments about your junior academic course offerings. So in English language arts, you have American Lit, then you also have a section of American Lit that offers extra support. And then you also have an opportunity at an AP course. Um, it's titled AP Language, and it would take the place of your American Lit. You, you do not have to take um, an additional section of honors prior to taking your AP Language. You only have to sign up for AP Language, which would be in the spring semester. In math, you will either sign up for Algebra 2, Geometry with support or Algebra 2 honors. In science, your options are going to be physical science, chemistry, and for a few students who may be going into the medical field um, and need to make sure they make it through anatomy and physics, we will allow you to double up and take honors chemistry and honors anatomy in your junior year. You can't switch them though, so you can't just take anatomy your junior year and take chemistry your senior year. We need to keep them in order so you can take, um, you can double up and take both if you choose to do so. Okay, and in social studies we have a, a unique opportunity. Um, you can either sign up for regular U.S. history or if you're eligible, you can sign up for dual enrollment U.S. history 2111 or 2112. You do not have to take both. You may take both if you choose to do so. So now we're going to talk more in detail about some unique academic opportunities that we have at BCHS with advanced placement or AP courses and dual enrollment opportunities. AP courses give our students just a leg up um, when it comes to um, getting into college, being prepared to co for college, you can read some of these bullets. Um, but basically, they're college level courses. At the end, students take an exam. Um, the cost of the exam currently is $86, but if they take the course and make well enough on the exam, then they will get college credit for the course. Now, if you do sign up for an AP course, you need to expect rigor. It's, it will be a lot of work. Um, your teachers are going to have high expectations, so 
if you sign up for that class or classes, be prepared because there will be a lot of rigor. We're trying to get you ready for um, the next step. Um, but it does offer you the opportunity to earn college credit. And then if you are applying to a school where you need to show strength of schedule in your transcript, these AP courses will do that. And at BCHS, we try to offer a nice mixture of dual enrollment courses and AP courses to help to, to balance out your transcript and just to um, give you that strength of curriculum that you need to be competitive. These are our current AP offerings. And then um, moving along to the dual enrollment opportunities that our students have, um, there's a list here of degree level courses, beginning with English. We have two English classes, two histories. We're, we're offering three math dual enrollment courses next year and a speech course. That's, your, that's public speaking. Um, it's a communications class. Those are our degree level courses. Um, and then we offer some te two technical programs. Now we've had CNA for many years. And this year we're looking to add um, a program in welding where they will be able to earn um, actually two welding certificates, one um, in basic shielded metal arc welding and the other certificate would be gas metal arc welding. Okay, so you may be curious as to what the requirements are to take these courses. So the courses that I just mentioned to you are courses that are on that are offered on our campus. So they're offered here at BCHS. And our criteria for students to be able to take these classes is that they would have to have an 85 or better academic GPA. They would have to have a recommendation from their teacher. And they can't have missed more than five unexcused absences in the preceding semester. That is for on our, on our campus dual enrollment classes. Next, we're going to talk about dual enrollment opportunities that are off of BCHS's campus. This means you would be going to the actual college campus or taking an online class with a college. Now, um, we, we've stepped up the requirements for students who are going off campus because you're just not in as close proximity to us for us to be able to support you through those classes. So. Um, we have a little stricter criteria for you to be able to take those off-campus dual enrollment classes. You would have to have completed six high school honors courses. You would have to have a 90 or better academic GPA. And you can't have missed more than five unexcused absences in the preceding semester. Now, our dual enrollment opportunities are reserved for our juniors and seniors. However, our 10th graders need to have this in mind and be making preparations um, to be able to meet this criteria if they have aspirations of taking dual enrollment as a junior or senior. Okay, so if you're a student who um, you're saying, yes, that sounds like me and I want to do dual enrollment off of BCHS's campus, the first thing you're going to need to do to get the ball rolling is contact Miss Lori McNeese um, as soon as possible to get the ball rolling. Um, you'll get her contact information at the end of this presentation. You would need to contact her as soon as possible for, to go ahead and begin to make preparations. And listed there below are yearly deadlines to register for classes. Now this is not, these aren't deadlines for you to decide whether or not you want to do dual enrollment. These are deadlines if you already have the the plans in place and you've met with Ms. McNeese, these are deadlines to actually register for the classes. Okay, let's bounce back to some pathway options here at the high school. We're going to review those quickly. Okay, as, as, you've all, as you already know, um, we, have ser we have many opportunities for um, a variety of pathways. We have advanced academic pathways, we have CTAE pathways, fine arts, 
and world language pathways. The advanced academic pathways um, are advanced for advanced placement or um, you can actually earn an advanced academic pathway in any of the four core content areas if you take one AP course or one dual enrollment course that count as core credit. So while the advanced placement academic pathway may be difficult to attain, we have many students who are definitely capable of attaining an academic distinction in at least one content area. We also like for our students to take um, CTAE courses as this just broadens their horizons and makes them more well-rounded in addition to fine arts courses. Um, these, are the, these are the pathways that we currently offer for CTAE. And there will be a document emailed out that will include more detail on the CTAE pathways and exactly which courses go with which pathways. Okay, so we always have questions about work-based learning and it's never too early to get to thinking about work-based learning and what you're going to want to do your 11th and 12th grade years. So you have to be an 11th or 12th grader to participate. You have to be 16 or older and have a driver's license. You also have to have completed a minimum of one CTAE class. Um, Many times for you 10th graders, um, we like to encourage you to go ahead and take that intro to business CTAE classes. That will that'll broaden your horizons to, to be able to go out and get a job in any area. Uh, sometimes um, our students are limited based upon the pathway that they choose um, when it comes to work-based learning. So we encourage all students to take that at least that one course. It's the starter course for entrepreneurship. It's called Intro to Business. So we encourage all of our students who are interested in work-based learning to go ahead and take that. And that just opens many doors for them for employment as an 11th or 12th grader interested in going into work-based learning. Um, you should also know that there, are, there is some criteria in place for actually being admitted into the work-based work learning program that Ms. Uh, Dr. Andrea Tanner will have to share with you if you sign up. And, and also, if you don't meet that criteria, then we would be looking at selecting some different um, elective courses. Okay, we're going to talk for a moment about the high school transcript and HOPE eligibility as um, these, both of these topics affect your course selection. Okay, so HOPE scholarship um, basically equates to approximately 90% of paid tuition for students going to a Georgia um, public college. So that means if you maintain a 3.0 or higher academic GPA and you, maintain, and, and you take four rigorous courses, then you're eligible for HOPE scholarship. Now this is a big deal and it's something that most of our students can attain if they're willing to work hard for it. Um, you'll see a list below that details the rigor courses that are offered at BCHS. The underlined courses are courses that are, that are already a part of the college prep um, plan of study course sequence. So if you take the courses that we suggest for you, then you will automatically have the four rigor courses. But the, this is our complete list of rigor courses that we offer at BCHS. Okay. In addition to the HOPE scholarship, there's the Zell Miller scholarship that pays 100% of tuition in a Georgia college. In order to attain Zell Miller, you have to maintain a 3.7 academic GPA. And that includes the four, you have to have the four rigor courses, at least four. Um, and then... The second component is that you have to score, post a score of at least 1,200 on the SAT or a 26 composite on the ACT. Now this has to be done in one sitting and for the SAT it's your combined verbal and math. So if you sign up for writing, you, you don't add that writing score in. It's just the combined verbal and math and you can't combine, combine scores 
from different test dates, it has to be in one sitting. So that's a 1200 SAT or a 26 ACT. Okay, so you've gotten a lot of information. And sometimes it helps to have a visual. It helps to just have kind of a, a one-stop shop go-to cheat sheet <laughs> that kind of gives you all of that information. And um, so we have carefully designed a couple of advisement documents that will help you make selections of courses. It'll help you see your students' course sequence. Um, and we plan to share those out in an email with you on Monday as part of the registration process. So um, you'll receive an email that'll have some documents that'll aid you in that registration process. And speaking of the steps for registration, let's talk about those, okay? So you're, on Monday, we will email out a form for registration. Now, that form <clears throat> is going to be accessed through your student email account. You're going to select a plan of study. You're going to make academic course requests. And you're going to make elective course requests. You can certainly access the documents that I spoke about to help assist you in this process. Um, keep in mind that as you make the request, they are requests at this time. Um, your actual schedules will not be available until July, most likely. And we know that you're going to have questions, and we want you to contact us. We're here to help you. Your teachers are here to help you. And um, myself and the counselors are here. So here is our contact information. Most of you already have your teacher contact information, and you've already been in close communication with them. Um, so let's take a look at some of those forms now. So now we're going to look at the junior registration form. You'll begin this form by filling in your first name, middle, and last by selecting your homeroom teacher and indicating your plan of study. Then you'll select your academic courses. In English Language Arts, there's American Lit, AP Language, and American Lit with, with extra support. For Math, there's Algebra 2, Honors Algebra 2, and Geometry with extra support. And in Science, we have Physical Science, Honors Chemistry, or Honors Chemistry and Honors Anatomy. And in Social Studies, we have U.S. History, Dual Enrollment U.S. History, and the third option allows you to select both Dual Enrollment U.S. History courses. If you have a doubt when you're selecting your academic course, merely leave the section blank and we'll ensure that you get into the correct section. Sometimes we have students transfer in, or for some reason, they get out of sequence. In this case, you may not see your academic course even listed. So if this happens to you, leave that section blank. Or if you're just confused about your selection, leave it blank. We'll make sure you get into the correct course. And if we need to give you a call, then we'll just give you a call so we can talk through it. That leads us into our elective selections. The list of election, electives begins with some academic elective offerings, Spanish 1, 2, and 3, AP Psychology, and Dual Enrollment Public Speaking. Then we move into Fine Arts which is visual art, band, and chorus. Now guys, let's say that you took art last year, but you're uncertain of whether or not you took visual arts two or visual arts three. So you're unsure of whether you would sign up for visual arts three or visual arts four. If that's the case, in contrast to what I just told you about your academic selections, 
I would want you to go ahead and choose the course that you think that you should be taking next. We'll make sure that you get in the correct section of visual arts, but by you at least selecting one of those, then we know that you want to take an art class. Okay, once we get through fine arts, then we get into physical education. We have PE and two different types of weight training. So we have team sports and we have body sculpting. If you're a student athlete, you're required to take two semesters of weight training. So you would sign up for team, weight training, team sports, semester one and semester two. If you're just a student who, maybe you're not a student athlete, but you just enjoy working out every day, then you would sign up for body sculpting and you can either sign up for one semester or two. That moves us into the CTAE section, which begins with ag. Guys, um, there's gonna be a, a resource emailed to you that will help you when you get to the CTAE selections. It shows you the courses in each pathway. I think this would be an important document to possibly pull up and, and see as you're choosing CTAE courses. It'll give you a little um, extra insight to which course you may need to sign up for. If unsure, however, um, we at least want you to get us in the ballpark. So go ahead and select the course that you think is next and we'll make sure that you get into the correct section. So as I said, we start out with ag, we move into audio video, transportation, which is your auto shop. You have transportation one, two, and three. Intro to business and technology. This is your entrepreneurship pathway. So it's business one, two, and three. Then we have our culinary arts courses there. That moves us into our technology courses, which begins with intro to digital technology. Early child, one, two, and three. And education, one, two, and three. I want to give a little extra um, clarity here as well. The early childhood courses are tailored more to a student who is interested in daycare. This means caring for the very young child. The education courses are the courses that you would take if you're interested in becoming a teacher, even if that would be at the pre-K or kindergarten level. Um, you would still want to sign up for the education courses, um, not the early child courses. The early child courses are um, interesting courses as well, um, but they just tailor more to the, the daycare side of things. This is also the pathway where you get to carry the baby home for the weekend, and that's kind of a cool uh, concept that our students enjoy. Um, let's move on along. Um, here we have our engineering classes, um, JROTC, and I just want to remind you guys, if you're interested in going into the military, if you take uh, at least three JROTC courses in high school, you'll go in at a substantially higher pay level than if you do not take them. So it's very lucrative for our military prospects to uh, try and make sure you take three of those classes. Okay, that moves us into our healthcare classes. And once again, I would just have you reference that pathway sheet that we're gonna email you. I think that it would be helpful in selecting your healthcare classes. Then we have journalism, that's your yearbook classes. Kids typically take that all year. And then here is where you would sign up for the CNA program. And remember that it's going to count as two courses. So it takes two of your electives. The same is true for the new welding certification program that we are offering. It will take, it will take two of your electives. So it's the equivalent of two courses. Okay, and then finally, here's your work-based learning. Um, you can sign up for 
one or two blocks per semester. Uh, just want to ask you, if you're only signing up for one block, make sure that's fourth block. You would only sign up for third block if you're also signing up for fourth block in the same semester. And finally, the last section is just where our student athletes will indicate the sport that they are planning to play next year, actually the sport or sports that they are planning to take next year. And once you've done that, um, you would submit. If you're not playing a sport, then you would just skip this section and submit your form. So finally, I just want to share with you those advisement documents that, I've, that we've referenced throughout um, the video. I just want to show you what those are going to look like whenever you pull those up. Um, when, when you, you know, you're going to need to access the email and then you'll be able to, to pull these documents up from the email. This is the class sequencing document. It's just a really good visual um, to help you see where your student is and where he or she is going. Um, then this is the other advisement document that I told you. It just packs a ton of information into one sheet. Almost everything we've talked about today um, is condensed into that sheet. So it's, it's very helpful um, to keep and have. And then finally, this is the other document that we're going to share with you. Um, this is the career clusters and pathways, and it kind of it shows the, the courses under each of the, the various pathways. So we thought that that would be um, a help to you as well as you move through this process. Um, please remember that you have that contact information. Um, if you need help with any of this, we do not want you to become frustrated. We don't want this process to intimidate you. We, we are here for you. Please reach out to us, to your teachers. Um, re reach out to me, Carol Ann Gill. Um, reach out to your counselors, um, Ms. Kathy Chesser and Lori McNeese. Um, we're here to help you with every step, and we're excited about next year.